Ladies and gentlemen, please buckle up, because we have reached our destination. Let's keep things peaceful until everyone is off the plane. We now have had combat training, so none of you had better try anything. This stunning white, never-ending background, as you see behind me, is a preview of what's to come, for we have just landed in Alaska. January means experiencing Alaska in the wintertime. It's cold, there's only eight hours of sunlight, but it still remains a magical time indeed. Lodging's cheaper, of course, there's more accommodations, but the real highlight is how exciting the state is with festivals and sporting events during that time. One of which being dog sledding, which is all of the hype leads up to the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race. It's an annual long-distance sled dog race early in March from Anchorage to Nome, entirely within the U.S. state of Alaska. A uh, personal story here for a second. I vividly remember, kind of, in second grade, I don't know why, but we, we followed the Iditarod. I grew up in Indiana. This is Midwest corn country. And we're looking at, I think every student had like a guy, like we knew the sledders and we knew their teams and stuff. And we had like a board to put whose guy was in the lead or whatever, like looking at updates in the news. It, hell of a elaborate fever dream, honestly, it could be, but I totally remember it. And then like the guy who won or whatever, like the kid whose guy won, I guess they were tethered to him or something. They got like candy or something, uh, <laughs> something like, you know, all these kids are shitty about their, now they're blaming the writers. They're like, oh man, this guy freaking, why didn't he try harder? I wanted that candy. Anyway, yeah, at one point, even the Winter Olympics was like, hey, we're in Norway right now, but uh, the dog sledding things going on are popping off. Like, it's 1994. The, everybody's supposed to be paying attention to the Olympics. They're not. They're looking at the dogs. We should add dogs. Americans sometimes forget about Alaska, but I want to see it. And I want to see how the state has kept this alive for so long, when at one point, dog sledding was also almost wiped out. But boy has Alaska been able to capitalize on tourists interested in dog sledding. It's expected, and honestly they should, I guess, but that means the options are expensive. They are, after all, possibly bucket list things or once-in-a-lifetime experiences, that sort of thing. One of them is a... Uh, there's a lot of helicopter tours mixed with dog sledding, with friendly pilots who are ready to make sure you have a great time, this tour is bound to be one you won't soon forget. Once you take off, the flight will begin as you fly over a beautiful braided river that lapses in the ocean. Wildlife is abundant in this area, as so you fly towards the mountains and head over Resurrection Bay. Keep an eye out for otters and whales. Your experienced pilot will land on the Godwin Glacier and our staff will escort you towards the dog camp, where you'll be greeted by more than two dozen sled dogs, anxiously awaiting to pull you across the perfect winter snow. To ensure a positive experience for all, our staff will show you how to interact with the friendly sled dogs, and you'll get the chance to pet and play with them before taking off. Ready to tour the dog sled ride? With our unique double driver dog sled, you'll have the option to sit and relax or to stand and help mush the team under the supervision of the guide. Upon return from your journey, we'll have you meet the camp puppies for a photo opportunity. And each one has a very different personality. Like this one right here is kind of the quiet one. This one's the rambunctious one. Yeah. And they'll each have a certain spot on a team at some point, but yeah. after they're at least six months old. That is correct, yeah. And that kind of emerges over time um, where to best put them. And a lot of people don't realize sometimes uh, dogs are either right or left-handed too. So Are they really? Yeah, so even which side of the line you put them on makes a Are difference. Are the most rambunctious ones uh, the ones that you usually do? No, not necessarily. Um, Let's walk through because it's an okay. educational... After flying goodbye to the team, it is time for the scenic flight back to Seaward. At our office in Seaward, 
will have complimentary coffee, hot chocolate, and tea, eagerly waiting to hear about your experience. Please tell us. <laughs> so that's that. I mean, that's as expected. If you want a more hands-on experience and uh, maybe learn a thing or two about dog sledding, Paws for Adventure has a mushing school kind of thing at 325 a person. There's just, there's so many. And like Alaskan Husky Adventures, they offer the usual as well, but you can also get the proposal special. So you can propose Alaska style, as they say. Then around Christmas, you can purchase the Christmas special, which lets you cut your own Christmas tree for an extra $100. I'm not trying to bash all of it or anything. It just feels so commercialized. I want to go back to the roots. Back when indigenous people relied on the use of sled dogs. When it was life-saving. I want to see Balto. But Balto isn't even in Alaska. He's in Cleveland, Ohio. Because after his life-saving run, a little money was made from the spotlight before Balto and the other six dogs were put in a dime museum in Los Angeles. Apparently in pretty bad conditions. So bad that a man named George Kimball had seen them, was shocked, and then asked the sideshow owner to hold them for a hundred bucks so he could gather the two thousand dollars fund needed to rescue them. Keep in mind a hundred dollars in the late 1920s was around fifteen hundred dollars and two thousand dollars was about thirty thousand dollars. So Kimball had to recruit the whole area to help the dogs, the whole country and everything. The Save Balto Fund and race was now in full in swing. And everyone was participating, everybody, even children wanting to get their coins out of their piggy banks to add to the fund to help Balto. And they did it in just 10 days. The headlines read, City smashes over top with Balto's fund, Huskies to be shipped from coast at once. Balto, Fox, Billy, Tilly, Sai, Old McDock, and Alaska Slim were saved and were able to live out their lives happily in the Brookside Zoo. And so Balto belongs to Cleveland now, but Alaska doesn't care. Balto can stay in Cleveland because the real celebrity hero dog that gets the pride and fondness of Alaskans and those who know of him is a dog named Togo. Never heard of him? Well, luckily, Disney released a film about him in 2019. He's undersized. He's trouble. Well, good afternoon. He's untrainable. Stop that! Ah! What does he bring to the breed? The heart of a survivor. He outran every single one of them. He's not a sled dog. He's a lead dog. What we have in our children is an epidemic. The death sentence. They found a cure. Round trip is 600 miles. You see that storm in the horizon? Only one man and one dog can make that run. He's 12 years old. He's too old. He'll never make that distance. Got one more in your pump. My guess is we don't find him till the thaw. All right, Togo. Time for us to find out who we are. I always thought he lived for the sled, when all along, what he lived for was me. I got him, Togo! Ah! Togo is the true hero. Togo is the true hero in the story, and he doesn't get much glory. One of the most terrifying moments in the movie is in the second crossing of the Norton Sound on the way back toward Nome with the serum. Sipala and his team are crossing the sound when they find themselves stranded on an ice floe, separated from shore by a narrow but formidable strip of sea. Sipala tosses Togo ashore, and the dog somehow manages to tow the floe 
close enough to the coast to enable it, the rest of the team to follow. This is very close to what Cipolla told the Boston Sunday Post of what really happened. And while the suspense in the movie is more than adequate, Cipolla described even more danger. In Cipolla's account, as summarized in The Cruelest Miles, the tow rope connecting Togo and the rest of the team on the floe snapped, and the end of the rope fell into the water. Togo jumped into the water, clambered back out, wrapped the rope around his body, and pulled. Yeah, the story of Togo is the story of a sickly, unwanted puppy becoming one of the greatest lead dogs and a true hero. And whose story is not known. For some reason, Balto got all the glory. According to the cruelest miles, Cepola wrote, I hope I shall never be the man to take away credit from any dog or driver who participated in that run. We all did our best. But when the country was roused to enthusiasm over the serum run driver, I resented the statue of Balto, for if any dog deserved special mention, it was Togo. So Alaska has Togo. Go see him in his glass box prison at the Iditarod Trail Headquarters Museum in Wasilla, Alaska.